As you probably know, kit reviews make up a tiny part of the product testing I do at Bennett's Bike Social. But every so often, something's launched that's so important, that's such a benchmark in motorcycling, that I just have to do a video. The Shoei Neotech 3 is one of those products, and having used this one for about 700 miles now on an R1250GS, a VFR800, and a ZX6R, I'm gonna give you the unbiased, non-sales pitch review. And most of the videos I do are based on a combination of the hundreds and hundreds of written reviews at bikesocial.co.uk, so please do always check there before buying anything. Even this, as while I've put a good amount of miles on the show in Eotech 3 so far, in all conditions, if anything ever changes, I can update that written review. Video doesn't let you do that. So I've had this helmet for four weeks now, having signed an NDA that meant I couldn't even wear it to a bike meet, let alone post about it. But that was a gamble for Feridax the importer, as they know that I'll always tell you exactly how it is. No punches pulled, and in this case, I'll be telling you on the day that it's officially announced. Thing is, it is better in almost every way than the Neotech 2, but there are a few things you need to know. I'm gonna cover this in the same order as I would a written review, but I'm able to go into more depth there, and of course, I can keep it updated. So if you're thinking of buying one, and it is a hefty chunk of money to invest, Check that out too at the link in the description or Google Shoei Neotech 3 review and Bennett should be near the top. Oh, and if you want any advice about this, any other kit, choosing your next or your first motorbike, you wanna find new places to go or you just wanna chat to us or thousands of other like-minded riders and industry experts, join our Bennett's Bike Social Facebook group. Just before we get into it, if you've never tried a flip front or modular helmet, they really can be great. You can pop it open when you're filling with fuel to talk to mates who ask directions, or of course, if you want the full wind blast of an open face lid. Oh, and the best bit I realized last night was that my phone's face recognition works with the chin bar open. So I can fill up and pay for fuel with my phone without even taking my gloves off. And they're tested to stay closed in a crash, but they do have to compromise structural integrity to some extent. Still, this is an ECE 2206 helmet, so it's met a high standard of protection. Now this is the metallic blue finish, which like the other colors has an RRP of £619.99. The plain white or black is £589.99, while the graphics cost £679.99. They should all be available in stores now. So 90 quid more for graphics. Now, I admit I thought that seemed a bit of a jump, but to be fair, it turns out that the painting of plain colors is fairly automated. The graphics have to be applied by hand, and any tiny imperfections are all finished by brush before the clear coat, so that's every single helmet. So yeah, it's pretty involved. This is an expensive lid, but it's a premium one, and the build quality is very good. There are touches as well, which we'll go through, that do add to the cost, but the most important thing is that any helmet fits you properly. So always make sure it's snug all around the head and the cheeks, but that there's no pressure points anywhere you really should go to a decent shop and try any lid on for yourself, ideally getting some help from the staff there, no matter how long you've been riding. Honestly, a shocking proportion of people are in helmets that are simply too big for them. Check out this video up here for advice on getting the right fit. Now, Shoei does a custom fitting service and your dealer will be able to advise, but forget the idea that you either have a Shoei head or an Arrow head. I find both fit me pretty well, but I would say that the Neotech 3 has been more comfortable from the moment I put it on than even my Neotech 2 is now, which is bedded in over many tens of thousands of miles. So this is, of course, an ECE 2206 helmet, which means it's proven to offer increased protection in a greater variety of tests than an ECE 2205 certified lid. There's a lot more tests in the use certification across more of the shell and at higher and lower speeds. There's also a new oblique test to ensure the uh, helmet does all it can to protect your brain from the twisting forces that can occur if your lid hits a surface at an angle. Now, the Neotech 2 was already dual homologated, which means it had been tested as safe for riding with it open or closed. But that's a prerequisite of 2206 for flip, so unsurprisingly, the Neotech 3 is the same. There's no lock you have to fiddle with, like there is on the Shuba C5 or AGV Tour Modular, for instance. The chin guard will stay in place while riding if it's pushed all the way up. Not that most people bother with the latches on the others anyway. If you want to ride with the chin bar open a lot though, consider a flip over lid, like the Shark Evo or the LS2 Advan, as 
a flip up lid like this can act as a sail in high speed if your bike doesn't have a big screen. Oh, and this has three outer shell sizes across the range. So people in the extra small don't have to put up with the full size outer shell of an extra large with loads of extra padding. Too many people worry about weight. And yeah, you can feel the difference if you compare two different lids in the hand, but you'd have to have a pretty weak neck to notice anything when you're wearing them. In what, 27 years of riding and testing kit, I've never thought any helmet was too heavy. What matters is aerodynamics. And while this isn't as invisible feeling as something like the Arai RX-7, for instance, only when turning my head while fully in the wind at high motorway speeds is there any kind of feeling of drag. And even then, that's less noticeable than the Neotech 2. Now I weighed this size medium Neotech 3, and it comes in at 1,732 grams. The Schuberth C5 is 1,695 and the AGV Tour Modular is 1,703. And if you want to know how that compares to others, the Arai RX-7 Evo is 1,568, and while I haven't reviewed one, the Shoei X-Spirit Pro is claimed to be 1,450 grams. With events open, the Neotech 3 feels similar to the Neotech 2. I, to be honest, I'd struggle to say it feels much better, but it definitely works great with plenty of air moving over the visor and across the top of the head to the always open exhaust on the back. And with everything shut, it's still very still inside, but Shoei has put these two small cutouts in the visor seal to make sure air can still get out. And there's more air control though in the new lid with a two stage or closed chin vent instead of just open or closed. And the top vent is a lot easier to use than the old one, which got quite stiff over time. The chin's got a new bug guard in it, and you can pop it out for cleaning, though there's not a guard in the top like on the C5, which you can also take to bits for cleaning. Now, air flow's really good on the top with even the screen up on the GS. But if you sat behind the screen, you will of course have limited flow through the chin. You can pop the chin skirt out, or it's really easy to crack the visor open. Or of course, you can ride with the whole front up, which can be great in town especially. The nose guard is removable and cleverly it now blows up across the inside of the visor and to your cheeks. Though if your head's directly in the wind, this can feel a little bit tickly on your face at very high speeds. Take it off and all the air goes straight up and to your brow. Now because I wear glasses, ventilation is really important to me, but in any lid I'll often ride with the visor just cracked open for a bit more air. Depends really what I'm riding and the, what the weather's like. Anti-fog coatings don't tend to work on the anti-reflective coatings of spec, so if you've found a good solution, a good, a good fluid to put on there, please pop it in the comments below. Now I tested the Shoei Neotech 3 in really heavy rain for three hours, and it's to be expected that some fine water spray is gonna reach the visor with the open chin vent. But shutting it cures that. With the top vent open, small amounts of water can make their way down the inside of the shell, over the sunshield, and drip in front of your eyes, before pooling on the bottom of the visor. Shutting this vent pretty much stops it, but I did find that in that really, really heavy prolonged rain, some water did manage to find its way into the closed vents and trickle down. It's really not much at all, and these were very bad con conditions, so I was impressed this didn't cause any problems with visibility. It's, it's, it's not like you're seeing a waterfall, you just see the odd little drip where something's found its way in. And yeah, I haven't seen a helmet that can beat that kind of conditions for that long, really. Oh, I should say though that the sun shield did see, need some of the watermarks cleaning off, uh, but you can take it out if you want to, makes it, and it's easy to clean. Now this is an all new visor, so if you're coming from the Neotech 2, the old one won't fit. There's now a central tab, which I love, it's, it's easier to get at with your right hand when you're holding the clutch in, and it now locks down securely, which creates a very tight seal around it. The lock's really easy to use uh, once you get used to it and you can pop it just open. Have it about five mil open at the first ratchet or set at any point right up to the top. At high speed, if you're using any of the middle ratchet points, it can close itself. But if you have the visor fully open, it stays there. It's also nice and high, so it's well out of your eye line. You get a pin lock Evo in the box, which prevents fog by being like double glazing. And you can ask your dealer to fit it, but it's pretty easy. There'll be a thin plastic backing on the on the on it when you get it. Obviously, I've taken that off, but peel that off just at the edges where the little notches are. Then pop uh, one notch onto one of the pins, bend the visor open like this, pop the other notch 
onto the other pin, then flex the visor open until it seats into place. It's rare you have to, but on some visors you might need to adjust the pins as they're eccentric. So move them around and you can make for a tighter or a looser fit. The point is, the soft seal around the edge must be pressed against the visor all the way around to work properly. And to take it out, just bend the visor open and lift it out of one of the notches on, on, the, on one side first. Once you've got the hang of it, it's much easier to clean your visor, so it's worth having a go at. Fitting and removing the visor itself is the same as other showies. You just pull forward a bit while holding the release lever. Now, after at least two hours in very bad rain, with all the vents shut and the chin skirt fitted, the pin lock did start to miss just on the surface at the very outside edges, but it cleared quickly with the vents open. Very bad conditions for a long time can affect anything, but the small vent holes in the visor seal seem to stop it getting really bad. And last thing on the visor, the drop down sun shield on the Neotech 3 comes down five millimeters more than the old one, but it looks more in use um, because there's, there's much less light leaking around the bottom. It's just off the bridge of my nose and it's got a much smaller gap of light all along the bottom when riding. Now this really is a big improvement, especially over the last one. Uh, and in variable conditions, the fact that only the very bottom ridge of the external visor is visible, which diffuses the light to itself as well, it means it's one of the closest sun shields I've used to having a dark main visor instead. Now the Neotech 3's lining's quite different to the Neotech 2. That was comfy, but this is next level for me. The neck skirt's a little longer for better sealing, though to be honest you'd need to have it pointed out to spot it but all of the lining's removable right down to the strap covers, so it's easy to wash. And you should do that by hand, but I just pop it all in a helmet bag and then put it in a gentle machine wash, but don't blame me if that goes wrong though. In my three hour ride through heavy rain, I did find that water had whipped its way up around just the bottom of the lining just a little bit, but I didn't notice it until I took the lid off. I should have stood it on a towel, not a glass top table when I got home. It was, it was, it was still damp the next morning but it wasn't uncomfortable and it didn't spoil the ride even for the first few miles while it dried out. The Neotech 3's ratchet chin strap has been redesigned to be narrower for a more comfortable fit. To be honest, it doesn't feel that different to me, but that four and a half mil might make a difference if you didn't like the last one. Some riders do only trust a traditional double D ring fastener, but those are almost impossible to use with gloves on. And the safety and security of these micro ratchets has been well proven, so don't be afraid to make the jump to something that's a lot more convenient. Right, I didn't find the Neotech 2 to be a particularly noisy helmet, and I'm certainly not the only one, but I am aware that some people thought it was. The thing is, the biggest cause of noise on any lid is buffeting from your bike's fairing and screen, which is impossible for any helmet brand to test for really because there's so many variables. What I can say is that on the VFR800 and the ZX6R, which leave my head in the airflow, the new Shoei Neotech 3 is certainly quieter than the Neotech 2, thanks in part to the smaller gap at the uh, rear edge of the chin section where it meets the main shell. Now noise obviously increases when the vents or visor are open, but no more than anything else that uh, I can tell. And on the R1250 GS, I had no trouble with any drumming or other noise, whether the screen was up or down. And I do have the original standard BMW screen on there. Look, you must wear earplugs when you're riding at anything above 40 mile an hour. I just get mild tinnitus after riding without them in my early years, and that's annoying enough, so I wish I'd known better. I'll put a link to an article about finding uh, the best earplugs up here and in the description. And when the Neotech 2 came out, the intercom for the Neotech 1 didn't fit it. And I'm sorry to say that the Neotech 3 uses a different intercom as well, the new SRL 3. Now I do full testing of range, clarity, battery and everything. So that will be on the Bike Social website very soon. As soon as I get one, I'll get it installed and start doing some testing on that. And those reviews also get posted on the Facebook group, so you can get notified of new ones quickly if you're on there. Anyway, the SRL3 will be a Bluetooth and mesh intercom to the best of my knowledge, and as it's made by Senna, it will give great group comms to any other Senna mesh users, and should pair with new interphones too. Also, Cardo has added an update that means pairing through Bluetooth is a lot easier now with Senna's. It's probably gonna be about 350 quid, so it'll be a top spec one. But if you buy it at the same time as the lid, you should be able to save a good chunk of that as helmets are VAT exempt in the UK. And it makes the comms part of that purchase. Check when you're buying with a few shops to see what they'll do. 
Anyway, I test fitted a Cardo Pack Talk Edge, which has the larger JBL speakers to the Sherry Neotech 3. And while you do need to stick the main unit slightly back from where you would on a full face lid, it fits fine. The diameter of those speakers is no problem in there at all. They fit in just nicely. They are a little, they do stick a little bit proud though. So if you have very wide head, big ears, you might feel them. Um, but you, you also have to tuck the boom mic under the cheek pad. So how comfortable that is will depend on the shape of your face, but it is possible to put non OEM comms on this. Of course, if you only want to listen to music and sat-nav directions on your own, so you're not going to be talking to anybody or taking calls, you could leave the mic out altogether and fit, for instance, the excellent value Cardo Spirit HD. The Shoei Neotech 3 is better than the Neotech 2 in almost every way. If you can afford it, and if it fits you properly, then it is a great investment. This is probably the most versatile, go anywhere, do anything helmet I've worn. Now in this price range, the Shoebuff C5 is probably gonna be its main competitor, but a few niggles start to show after long-term use, which is why it's so important to be able to update reviews. It is still a good bit of kit though, and will almost certainly be available cheaper than the Neotech 3. The AGV Tour modular was a real surprise when I reviewed that after the disappointment of the Sport modular. It's not perfect, but have a look at that review too, as it's definitely worth checking out. Just Google it and bet it should be the first hit. Actually, the biggest competition is probably going to be the Neotech 2. It was clear that a new 2206 version would be coming this year and dealers have been pushing stock of the outgoing model hard to clear the decks. But don't feel you've missed out if you've just bought one. I can't be sure of course, but there's nothing obvious that's changed in the new design to indicate much difference in the safety of the construction. So getting 2206 certification that proves that this lid has been tested to more stringent standards than the older 2205 one. What differences are made, we can't, we can't know. Um, it doesn't change how this lid was. If you've just picked up a Neotech 2, it's still an excellent helmet. If it's time to upgrade though, and you like the old one, you'll almost certainly absolutely love the new model. And if you're still hanging on to an original Neotech, it's definitely time to treat yourself to the new one. If this has been useful, please do hit the like button as it really helps the channel. I don't use affiliate links and aren't in any way influenced in any of my reviews. I just want you to be able to make the right choices for yourself. Come and say hi at the Bennett's Bike Social Facebook group if you get a chance and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see covered next. still here, okay? While I haven't got hold of one yet, I can tell you that the new Shoei GTR 3 was announced today too. It'll be available from the 6th of October starting at £479.99 with graphics costing £589.99. It's basically Shoei's answer to people who want a touring helmet that's not a flip front. It's got a drop down sunshield, the same new strap as the Neotech 3 and the new locking visor with a centre tab. Shoei says the vents are improved through development in its own wind tunnel and it's quieter. It also takes the same new SRL3 comm system as the Neotech 3. As soon as I can, I'll get you a full review, so make sure to keep checking the Bike Social website and of course, hit subscribe to see more of our videos.